everyone, and welcome to GTMF's Backstage Pass, your weekly invitation to gather, to be in the company of friends, to learn, and to connect with our whole GTMF musical community. This is show two, and uh, today we've invited three violists to join our conversation. My name is Eva Capaletti Chow, and I am a violinist. Um, I've been coming to GTMF for almost 20 years. And my name is Jerry Ho. I'm the associate conductor for GTMF. And with us, we also have Mike Richards, who is our technical and uh, production wizard uh, leading the show. So, Mike. Thank you, Thank you very much, Jerry and Eva. Uh, you guys take it away, have fun. So today we have three lovely guests, all violists. We have with us today, Ali Goodman, we have Joan De Josepian, and we have Rita Porfiris. So without much further ado, please come join us. On on. Yay, welcome. Hi. I'm so glad to see your faces. Good to see all of you. Yeah. Good to see you. It's nice to see your background, Rita. Where are yep. you? I am on my deck. I am not in a room, I'm outside. I thought it would be nice to uh, kind of bring a little bit of the outdoors because since that's what the festival is about. Why don't I have each one of you, and I'll just do it in the order that's on my screen, have you introduce yourselves, where you live now, where you're from, what you do, um, where you are, how long you've been with GTMF, and maybe also add um, one thing that you know you're going to be thinking about or missing this summer as we're not coming. So Joan, you're next on my, on my screen. Hi everyone, I am so happy to be here with you today. These beautiful faces that I'm uh, so going to miss this summer, but happy to see today. I am the Associate Principal Viola with the Houston Symphony and I teach the orchestral repertoire studies for the viola at the Shepherd School of Music. And my husband Eric Groundfor and I, Eric is a bass player, have been coming to the Teton Festival for 20 years now. I think it's 20, might be 19. So uh, we feel very close to the festival. We love playing the music with these amazing musicians and friends. Yeah, and I think you bring your daughter as well, right? Because we sort of have, our, those of us who have our children coming, it's like they have summer cousins. So how old is Clara? Clara is 15, and yes, it's a gaggle of kids, and they look forward to seeing one another every summer. She has never had a summer without GTMF. Same. So uh, this is a different experience for her this summer, but she, uh, she's looking forward to next year. Yeah. Allison Goodman. Hi, I'm Allie. Um, I live in DC. I, I'm a violist in the Kennedy Center Opera House Orchestra slash Washington National Opera Orchestra. Um, this will be my sixth summer at GTMF. And I know I'm really gonna miss seeing everybody. Um, it's like a big reunion because you know people through your musical journey and then you all go your separate ways and then you can come back together and, and reunite at GTMF. So I'm really going to miss that this summer. Rita, hi in the green. Hi. So for about 19 or 20 years also, I have been coming to the Tetons. And I think uh, when I started, I was a violist in the Houston Symphony, which is how I know the lovely and talented Joan. Before that, <laughs> I was a violist in the New World Symphony, which is where Eva and I met. Um, and it was so great to reconnect with her, Eva, at, in the Tetons. And of course, now that I'm not in the Houston Symphony anymore to see Joan every summer and to see all my other friends. Um, right now I live in Connecticut and I teach at the Hart School. So I'm in charge of chamber music and um, viola at the Hart School. So I'm opening this question to actually all three of you. Um, how has this time affected you, changed you, made you think of something different or, or um, yeah, let's just speak a little bit to what this time has been like for you. And um, Ali, you're first, just cause you're closest on my screen. Like it probably has been for everybody. It's been really hard. Um, you don't realize how important it is to play for an audience. I, I really miss the audience. Um, I can practice, you know, as much as I want right now. And we're so lucky as musicians to be able to make music on our own 
and I'm lucky to be married to a violinist so we can play duets, but it's, and, and I've done some online collaborations and it's, it's rewarding of course in a certain way, but I just really am missing playing for an audience, connecting with people in that way. Oh, I agree. Completely agree. It was funny because, you know, you just think, oh, wow, I'll have all this time and I can do all these little projects, but and they're, they are that and you can fill up your time during the quarantine, um, all sorts of projects. I'm doing all sorts of recording projects, you know, layered recording projects and of course, virtual teaching and all this other stuff. But you do really miss the audience. You miss connecting with the communities where we go and we play for all these different people all over the world. And it's really, it's hard. Yeah, but that means that when we all get back together again, it'll be so much better, sweeter. I echo my viola friends. I was surprised at how lost I felt at first, just swimming and not knowing how to set goals or schedule a day. Uh, I miss, of course, my colleagues and I miss the live experience with audiences and just the vibrations in a, in a concert space the vibrations of the instruments, the breathing of the people around me. Uh, those are things that I didn't expect to miss so much. And uh, it's, it's wonderful actually to connect possibly more with my music friends across the United States and even beyond. I think musicians are so creative and, and trying to connect as much as possible right now. And that has been uh, one nice thing that's come out of it is this connection across and, and bringing artists together. Let's speak to that for a second with Joan, but I know all three of you have been doing really interesting projects during this time. So Joan, I know you were doing the Living Room series for Houston Symphony. Do you want to speak a little bit about that? The Living Room series started a uh, little more than a month ago, the Houston Symphony Living Room series, which is a live concert from a home of a Houston Symphony member. Um, it is a $10 ticket and it only is available at the time they're live together. So that's kind of a nice thing about it. It's there in the moment as a regular concert would be. Uh, once it's done, it's gone. And I think there is an intimacy about it being in someone's living room. And I think a connection is created that way that perhaps we wouldn't have without it otherwise under normal circumstances we all want to be back to the normal, but perhaps these other things could deepen the experience when we go back. How do you do that? Is it streamed? Are you streaming? Is it that live? Wow. It is completely live streamed. For this house concert that you'd had for the Houston Symphony, is there any, uh, you had a family performance of the Bach double. Is there uh, something that you would, could share with us for it? Uh, we can share a little clip of the three of us preparing for the concert. So Eric, Clara, and I will be playing just a tiny bit of the last movement of Bach Double. <laughs> Rita, you're also, I'm seeing on Facebook, it's something to read and something to listen to. And, and then on top of that, I bumped into you again because of learning how to deal with acapella and all of these new apps that we're all attempting to learn during this time. What I'm really happy about is I started this um, project for my students because we usually do probably 50 to 70 outreach concerts a semester. I usually have them perform more in outreach in the community than I do on campus because those on campus concerts get kind of long, <laughs> you know, and they're kind of seen as well as something you have to go to. But, you know, we send them out to the community where they they have to play for people who can't get to concerts normally and the people really appreciate it. So all that went away. But what I started was this project called Heart for the Heart, the Heart School for the Heart. And um, all the students projects that started coming in since we were in quarantine, I've collected and I've curated them and I'm sending them out to hospitals and nursing homes. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's been kind that's of fun. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. You know, at least and it's not, you know, of course you can go on YouTube and you can find wonderful professional recordings of things that we've done or that our colleagues have done, but there is something to be said about kind of the homemade, you know, students coming in and doing something really from the heart. So 
I've done that. And then Eva, you mentioned my um, something to read and something to listen to, of course, with the, you know, murder of George Floyd a couple weeks ago and all the, the Black Lives Matter stuff. I started thinking about, well, we really don't pay enough attention to Black composers. And I do a chamber music history course where I spend about two weeks on it, but that's really not enough when you consider how many there are. And I thought I knew some things about them, but I've, I've started to post every single day a different Black composer and then a sound file of some of their music, if I can find it. And it's been eye-opening, like how many there are, how many Black women there are. They're really fantastic composers. So let's take a look at Rita's project here. One of the things that I was looking forward to most this year was supposed to happen last week, which was performing um, Romeo and Juliet with the Bolshoi. And so because of that, I felt inspired to try one of these online collaborations with a pianist friend of mine. There's an arrangement for viola and piano. Um, so I just did a small excerpt. It's a lot more work than it seems like it is to put together these recordings. So I, I really appreciate everybody who's been doing, you know, the symphonies are doing these Beethoven nines and all these beautiful works. And um, our opera company did Madame Butterfly Humming Chorus, which was really nice to be a part of. But overall, it, it's been nice to spend time with the viola. That's a plus. Yeah. yeah. It sounded great. I was watching it just actually yesterday and the uh, just a bit of the Romeo and Juliet. So, yeah. Oh, thank you. Really, really enjoyed it. So let's have a look at this clip of Ali uh, playing the Montagues and Capulets from Romeo and Juliet. I like me, I recorded my part and then the piano, like Natalia recorded her part and then we had no idea what to do after that. And so Derek was able to oh, put them together and, and create the, the movie and it, thank God it worked. We didn't have a click track or anything, so. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. We got so lucky. I don't know how it works. Oh, is that Eric? Eric. 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 <laughs> There's Eric. 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 <laughs> How's it going? Hey, I'm fine. I can't find the link. Oh, it's in Mike Richards' email. No, I didn't see it. Oh, I <laughs> might on, forgot to it. send it to him. <laughs> okay, thanks. So, uh, we have a couple of questions from our attendees. The first one is, what are your summer music plans in lieu of the festival? And if any of you are going to be coming to Wyoming for music from the mountains. Joan, would you like to start us off? Sure. After living in Houston for 20 years, this will be our first summer actually spent in hot and steamy Houston. <laughs> uh, aside from some teaching for summer festivals, we will be here and the Houston Symphony is hoping to restart in a, a limited way already at the beginning of July. So uh, mm -hmm. we're crossing our fingers first online and then gradually with audiences, but they have us blocked in for work through July and August. Wow. wow. And Ali, how about you and Derek? Uh, Derek and I are planning on coming to Wyoming. I'm going to be taking part in music from the mountains this summer. And um, we're hoping to do a road trip from DC to Wyoming um, and back. So. 
that's our, those are our big plans for this summer. There's not a lot of performance opportunity, live performance opportunity otherwise. Um, the opera doesn't have a summer schedule anyway. So definitely not working at the Kennedy Center this summer, which is closed. And um, yeah, I'm just really looking forward to Wyoming I, and to have that experience of playing live music with others again. And Rita, yourself? I'm running a summer virtual summer camp at Point Counterpoint, which I, where I usually am live right after the Tetons. And I'm also completing a bunch of recordings for the American Composers Alliance. I've already done one, a quartet um, by Robert Carl. And uh, the, th the thing about this project is composers write the pieces while in quarantine and you record them while in quarantine. So you have to record it in a month. That's kind of fun. <laughs> so we completed one quartet and I'm doing a solo viola piece next called Shades of Red. And I've got all these great video plans like for red dresses and red glasses and red strobe lights and all oh, sorts wow. of cool things. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, but I'm not, we're just staying here. We might go take small road trips, but we're staying here. Staying home, wow. And then uh, one more question from, um, is uh, it's from Marta actually. She was wondering if there's any particular concert that has been especially memorable from GTMF over the years. Anything that comes to mind, um, especially since we're all missing the chance to make music together. Well, since Marta asked, I mean, I every con this is this is true actually. Like every concert I've played at GTMF has been memorable. I've loved every musical experience I've had there. But when when I met Marta, it was um, we were playing. Mozart, one of the Mozart duos for violin and viola. And uh, Marta and I have since become very good friends. And I'll just never forget that concert. We played the G major and um, we played that at GTMF five, four or five years ago. So that I'll always remember that concert. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you can see the chat, but Marta just wrote, aww, with a heart. <laughs> I still remember that. I thought it was a really beautiful performance. I still remember seeing the two of you play. <laughs> and Joan uh, and Joan and Rita, both of you have been at GTMF for so many years, so there must be countless concerts that are anything that, you know, it's hard to just pick just one, but anything that just springs to mind. Rita? I think it was one of the Maulers. It must have been two with Donald. The San Francisco chorus was there. It was fantastic. I mean, I played a lot of Mahler. I love playing. We all do, obviously, um, you know, with Eschenbach and with, you know, in Houston, Michael Tilson Thomas. But that one with, with uh, Maestro Runnicles was really spectacular. Do you guys remember that? Eva was there, too. You must have been there. Unbelievable. In, Delicious. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was so looking forward to Mahler, too, this summer. Yeah. Just, just to hear it in that hall. I mean, when the choir comes in at the end just to hear just that sound would have been amazing. Mm. Maybe next summer, who knows? And Joan, how about for you? Ditto, uh, the big works with Maestro Runnicles for sure. I remember an Alpine symphony years ago that I just will forever think about when I think of that piece. I also have loved sitting in the audience for the chamber concerts and just hearing my colleagues play. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we all would certainly miss the music making and just each other's company. And so, but we still have more time for each other's company. Um, one thing that we are uh, enjoying having after each of these interviews is that we have a little post-concert hang and we are calling it a drink at the spur. Thanks to Philippe Chow. Uh, come on screen so we get a chance to see everybody and a drink will magically appear in your hands. Here are Mike Richards. <laughs> Um, so, but it's been such a pleasure to see all of you, to catch up with you, and just to hear how everything is going. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here, and yeah. let's talk some more. Yeah, thanks. Thank see you. See you guys next week. When I, was, when I was going through some pictures to try to find that background for today, I came across this, this great picture of me and you, Phil. 
both wearing black t-shirts. <laughs> oh, in the hall during a break. Oh, the good. hall. <laughs> right, we were Eva's two husbands. We were Eva's two husbands. <laughs> <laughs>